So we've explored a couple of different ways that the radiator can become more or less useful um, with, with effects on cost, uh, quality of radiator, or, or mass and isothermality of radiator. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about, about thermal analysis philosophy. Um, so the fundamental problem with thermal analysis software, um, great software packages, uh, Antis has some, uh, Thermal Desktop is another, um, in Europe they're using ASATAN, um, but thermal analysis software allows you to put in a design point. It's got a certain uh, radiator size, it's got a certain cooling system that isothermalizes the radiator, moves the heat from the heat sources to the heat sinks, um, it has a certain uh, uh, payload power and payload duty cycle. Um, and it allows you to put all that in, and then it tells you what temperature everything's going to get to. Um, it took me a long time to realize, uh, or, or to, to, to learn, a hard lesson to learn, that um, nobody besides the thermal engineers actually cares about that. Um, what they want to know instead is, uh, is a couple different things. One, uh, given the temperature constraints, given the power and architecture constraints, um, what, and, and mass constraints, what, what system design maximizes the key metrics? Key metrics might be size, weight, power, cost, uh, revenue, uh, cap uh, revenue capability of the payload, um, the schedule, the lead time, like how quickly you can put this thing together, et cetera. Um, another question is, is given these constraints, um, what are the trade-offs between these key metrics? Um, if, if you increased a, a, uh, your mass by a kilogram, uh, how much extra revenue would that get you? Um, how much less cost could you buy for that? Um, and then which system constraints, which things that you're thinking of as hard constraints are actually, uh, uh, in the end, negotiable? Um, so let's, let's consider a, a satellite system. Um, it has a, a, a certain, uh, certain radiator material, so that, that sets the cost. It's got a certain uh, mass uh, associated with isothermalizing the radiator. Um, and then uh, that allows a particular uh, use, uh, amount of use of the payload. Uh, you can use the payload half of the time to take pictures or show broadband to customers or something. Um, uh, and, and, and that implies a certain amount of revenue. So we, we put all that into our thermal analysis software, uh, and it turns out that, that by coincidence, the, the maximum temperature that the system gets to uh, with all these, with all these uh, design parameters is, is uh, we'll call it T1, and T1 happens to be the maximum allowable temperature of the system. This is the, the highest data sheet temperature allowable uh, by some component in the system. Um, so I, I drew some graphs here to, to illustrate the, the trade-off concept a little bit. So this design point that we're talking about here, we can, we can graph it um, with cost, maybe radiator quality versus uh, how much payload use, how, how, how often you can use the payload, how high power you can use the payload, and um, maybe translating into revenue. Um, so here, here it is on, on that set of axes. Um, cost versus mass, mass of the, the radiator of the cooling system, um, and then mass versus that same revenue metric here. Um, so um, some questions we can ask is, imagine that we switch from the, the baseline radiator material that we have to a higher performance one. Um, how much extra revenue could we get by doing that switch? Um, so we, let's see. Um, so if, if we, let's see, we'll increase the, the uh, radiator capability by a certain amount, um, but we're gonna keep that maximum, th that, that the temperature resulting from that system exactly the same. We'll keep that at, at this T1, this absolute maximum temperature allowable for the system. Um, and so we will, uh, we will increase the, the payload use only exactly enough to offset that so that they stay at the same temperature. So another point with T1. Um, and then uh, another question we could ask uh, maybe is, is if, we, if we make that same radiator upgrade, how much mass can we remove from the cooling system? Um, how, how much, uh, now, now that we have uh, improved the radiator capability per unit area, um, how much less mass can we devote to isothermalizing the, uh, the system? Um, if, if, so if we, if we don't change the payload use at all, um, maybe we can bank that in terms of mass instead um, for the same temperature, the same absolute ma maximum red line temperature. Um, let's see. Um, but looking at that a different way, maybe if we add a kilogram of mass to the cooling system, we can uh, increase the payload use, um, not touching cost at all, not, not touching that radiator material at all. Um, so maybe a, maybe a higher mass gives us a higher ultimate revenue. At that same temperature. Um, so, so the uh, the thermal analysis software can give you uh, can can tell you all of these points, um, uh, but then you will need to do some kind of sweep over all the independent variables that you have, um, some uh, various different uh, radiator uh, materials, various different costs. Um, you can sweep mass pretty straightforward. You can sweep different thicknesses of your radiator. 
Um, you can sweep different power levels for, for your, your payload, um, and so and that's sweeping revenue. Um, and it takes uh, a certain amount of, of uh, kind of thermal analysis knowledge in order to do that effectively, uh, depending on how, you, on how you divide up your domain, on how you divide up the independent variable space. Uh, you can end up with, with quite a lot of different cases that you need to, to run here. Um, and so making sure that, that each one of those cases takes the, the smallest amount of time possible uh, is, is super useful. Um, so we, we end up with a, with a whole grid of, of at cost X and mass Y, we end up with temperature Z, um, and, and, and so on for, for every cost and every mass and every cost and every revenue, every mass and every revenue. Um, and then we can go through this, this list um, and pick out all of the temperatures, or sorry, all of the design points that reach the same maximum temperature T1. Um, obviously, if, if we go above the maximum temperature, then, then we have, we have uh, broken that requirement. If we go below, below that maximum temperature, then we have uh, not used the system to its full capacity. Um, so we can, we can maybe draw another couple of, couple of dots here um, from this, this uh, mass thermal analysis and draw a line between the whole set um, and so also with cost versus revenue and with mass versus revenue as well. Um, so now, because we, because we have these lines, now we sort of have the price of each of our key metrics in terms of every other key metric, right? We know how many kilograms it costs to add 10% more payload power. We know how many kilograms it costs to, to, to reduce our, our, uh, our radiator uh, cost by a certain amount of money, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, moving one step further from that, um, excuse me, we'll go back to that. Um, when we have all of these costs, uh, all of these, these uh, maybe exchange rates between different key metrics in mind, um, we can then optimize the, the entire satellite, the entire spacecraft to, to, uh, uh, to maximize everything at once um, and, and come up with something that, that, that optimizes the entire design, the, the, the payload and the thermal system together, uh, the, the uh, structural mass and the, the thermal system together, um, rather than just optimizing for thermal. So one more thing to think of um, is that a lot of people consider the maximum allowable temperature of a spacecraft to be a fixed constraint. You, you look at all your data sheets and you, you see that your uh, one component is limited to 85 degrees Celsius. And you think if, if that component gets above 85 degrees Celsius, then, then the system is, is broken. Um, we stop serving internet customers. We stop being able to take pictures, et cetera. Um, but it is useful to know what happens when that component goes above that temperature. Um, because the, these, these constraints uh, that, you're, that you're considering to be fixed um, are actually uh, key metrics like anything else. They have a price in terms of mass, in terms of cost, in terms of everything else. Um, and, and so finding a way to, to maybe increase them um, can offer uh, a lot of benefits to the, the optimality of the system overall. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe on this, on this uh, mass versus cost diagram, we, we, we find a way to, uh, to increase the, the maximum temperature of the system, uh, and then we can use a, um, let's see, we can use a lower mass system um, at the same cost um, it, with, with our, our higher allowable temperature. Um, so this will require some, some amount of risk reduction. Some ways you can do that are uh, you can do some qualification testing of the parts. Uh, you can screen flight components um, between when you receive them and integration. Um, you can figure out which, which let's see, uh, for a maximum temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, um, maybe 50% of the parts will fail at 95 degrees Celsius. Um, and 50% won't because they are, they are built um, better, different, et cetera. Um, maybe you can, you can add more, uh, more precise thermal measurement, uh, more, more precise thermal control to the rest of the system uh, in order to keep things from getting to that, that, that exact maximum temperature to keep uh, different parts of the, of the system uh, a little bit cooler. Um, or maybe you, you can just move to a higher grade component. Uh, you can move from the, uh, the industrial grade, the automotive grade, or, or up to the, the military, uh, military or defense grade. Um, to get higher rated components uh, in, in these particularly sensitive uh, use cases. Um, that'll cost more, that, that'll probably add more lead time. Uh, all of these will probably cost more and, and add a little more lead time, but uh, if it unlocks a lot more system capability, uh, that can totally be worth it for the thermal system.